Hi guys, today I thought I would just go over some of the dongle options available to you guys who don't actually have a repeater or any way of actually accessing these digital networks um, to hand. Um, what I was going to do is I'm going to discuss the, you know, from the cheapest um, and right the way through to the most expensive one. So I'll start with the DB4. Um, now the DB4 Mini, this um, starts with uh, something like the 70 SEMS and then goes to the 2 meter version and then to this one which is the Ambi version. Now the 70 SEMS and 2 meter ones, they, they do what they you know basically say on the tin, they, they, they broadcast on um, either 2 meters or 70 SEMS. And they plug into a computer or they plug into a Raspberry Pi um, and they are then allow you then to set up some software. Um, in the case of the Raspberry Pi, you'll need to install that on Linux, you'll need to install Mono and you'll need to start uh, setting up the, 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 the image to, to work with them. The easiest way to use these is to actually plug them into something like a Windows 10 or sorry, a Windows anything tablet, um, providing it supports the, the software. Um, and you can then just pick the whole thing up and connect it to your mobile phone and um, that's it, where you go. Um, so this is the cheapest and it also stretches into the most expensive um, because of the Ambi version. So, you know, that's it. So, the, you know, the Ambi version, um, I, I can't remember if I mentioned that you can use just a headset, a microphone and you don't actually need a radio to work any of the modes. Um, the limitations with this one are that it does actually need set up it does need set up on the on the the PC, um, but once it's done, um, they're now so good that they're just. Uh, I mean, these are the first, and they're still you know one of the the most viable options to do this. So let's tuck that one out of the way. Then I think what I'll do is I'll go to the probably the I won't say the mid range. Mm, no, I'll say okay the the next expen most expensive version. Now this is the RF Sharp. Um, open spot now this one is about at the time of doing this it's about 210 pounds or thereabouts um, the what this one does or uh, um, above and beyond say the db4 or the db mega this one will allow cross um, mode okay so you can go from i think at the moment i think it's dmr to, through to c4fm or c4fm to dmr but it won't allow that same same uh, cross mode on D Star at, at the moment. I mean, it's not to say that it's, it's ruled out. It just uh, may be a firmware thing. Who knows? Um, so the advantage with this one is that its ability you don't actually install any software. You you basically use a web browser to to then make the, the settings and change and um, basically the onboard web server um, in in this little device. Um, it's very easy to use. The 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 biggest downfall or the biggest um, amount of questions I get asked are where people have these on completely different networks. Some routers, you know, whether it be TalkTalk, Talk, BT Internet, whatever it might be, some of these routers have their Wi-Fi put on something like a guest network. And what that means for you guys is that if you, it's on a, basically on a different domain um, or a, a different IP string. So for instance, you know, you might have 192.168.2.1. Okay, that might be the, the uh, typical IP um, for Wi-Fi. But on your um, wired connection, it might actually be 192.168.1.1. Okay, which, you know, is a different, completely different level. Um, and they won't, then you can't access the web um, uh, server on this thing. So you need to make sure this is on the same, um, you know, IP range. Um, and that if it's on a guest network that it does have access to the internet or, or whatever you, you however you set it up so you know this this that's for the limitations but it's also the simplest way of setting one of these up it's it's, a, it's an absolute doddle um, to do once you've done it once or twice um, but again as i say 210 pounds ish comes with an aerial um, and power supply and a little cable like this and you literally just plug it straight into your router and you can um, access this via a mobile phone via the web browser um, if you want to actually I should say you can connect this to something like an MR3020 TP-Link um, uh, uh, travel router you could connect one of these things in which is a basically a 3G um, uh, USB thing you can plug that into the MR3020 and that will give you a completely mobile situation so your 3020 underneath there that plugged into that this powered with you know a simple power brick um, and away you go. You can got a little portable setup. Now then, 
This brings us on to probably the DB Mega. Now this is the mid-range offering. Um, at the time of video in this, this one is about £150 for the complete kit um, for the Android version. And this is the DV Mega board, which you can buy individually, and you can drop the whole Mega board onto a Raspberry Pi if you want to, very versatile. Or you can drop this onto this open spot board. Now this open spot board is Bluetooth, um, which is an absolute hoot, because what it means is that you can now plug this directly into, um, into a power brick, okay use your android or your ios mobile phone there you go and it should power up there you go happy days um that is it self-contained take your mobile phone find the bluetooth connection on this connect to this then start the software then you can connect to this and then control all of the um, different uh, rooms and nodes and all sorts of things with that and away you go so but it doesn't stop there okay because obviously this is USB you can plug this into a computer that you can download a computer app um, and for Windows and actually then work this box on a computer if you've got a PC or if you've got a laptop or if you've got a, a, a tablet anything you want and it's again it doesn't stop there completely firmware updatable once you've got the, the open spot board on you can update the firmware via this via the USB port and all the, the firmware and everything is on the, um, the dbmega.uria.nl website but again it still doesn't stop there because what you can do I'll take this off for the moment because we'll come back to that you can connect this to a Raspberry Pi simply plug it in one of the USB ports and then run something along the lines of PiStar. Now I like PiStar, it's a really, really nice web interface based thing. Once this is running, you can use a computer to log into your Raspberry Pi web server or PiStar server and away you go. But again, it doesn't stop there <laughs> because what you can do now is you can add one of these Nextian screens. Now we, we have these at work um, and they're really cheap. Um, they're, they're not expensive at all um, and you simply just follow the wiring. You have to flash this screen with, with the Pi Star, um, sort of like a, a image type thing, which goes into this little SIM. You, you basically follow a little procedure and it, then it will flash this and to work with the MMDV um, software for the screen and away you go. Okay, and what happens is, once this little lot is powered up, okay, you'll find that Pi Star will then send um, image data to this and it will give you the um, um, like the the user your your, your user details and uh, whatever and it will come up with the, whoever's connected uh, again fantastic absolute hoot this this sort of system um, the image is a, uh, a doddle to set up and yeah it's, it's just it's the way to go I think that the with the DV mega um, now then um, you can what else can you do um, well that's pretty much it um, for the most part um, my favourite, I think, out of all of them, I, th I have to say, is probably the DV Mega, um, mainly because um, it's just so versatile and you can do so much with it. You can, can you can run it if you've got the um, the iOS board, you can run it with um, Apple iOS. If you've got the Android board, you can run it on Android. But in both cases, you can run it on a Windows tablet or a Windows computer or whatever. Um, but on top of that, you can plug it into a Raspberry Pi. You can you can muck about with Pi Star, which is fab. You can add the next gen screen. So for me, this is my choice. Um, but that is not to say that these things are not brilliant because they are. Okay, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, I love the DV4 a Mini. What it's done for for all this sort of stuff is just fabulous. Um, without this little stick, I think you know this, none of this would have. Uh, who knows where where we would be? It maybe wouldn't have happened quite so quick. Um, again, the, the the Shark RF. Again, I absolutely love it for its cross mode. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant cross mode stuff. Um, and also, you can do private IP if you if you're happy to go into the advanced menu. You can then set this to fixed IPs and do all some really, really IP funky stuff. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and of course, my old friend, the Raspberry Pi, and that is just, again, is really, really good. Um, yeah, there you go. I mean, I started out um, 
as a bit of a, a you know not not so much of a fan of uh, Linux but you know as I've got to sort of use it I'm, I'm getting you know getting the hang of it and I, I've learned to sort of like love the, the Raspberry Pi um, there are versions of this board by the way that actually fit on one of these this is an and um, the Arduino um, board you can actually install it on one of those if you wish um, but you need a different version for that um, and uh, you know that's another story so you can put it on an Arduino as well um, that sums it up thanks for watching I'm M0TIG um, Gary thanks for watching see you next time <laughs>